Hey everybody, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am one of the senior editors at MyJo in Toronto, and I am back again with another Boris TV tutorial. And you know, for the intro to this tutorial, I thought I would do something a little bit different. I thought I would call it in via video phone. And as you can see, I'm standing outside. The weather's really not that great. It's raining, there's a lot of electricity going on in the atmosphere, so it's not making for that great of a video signal. Okay, well it actually is. You know what, this tutorial is to show off two fantastic plugins inside of Boris Continuum Complete and I'm talking about Scanlines and Damage TV. And I want to show you how you can take some great looking footage, for example, from this iPhone 4 and take it and really make it look awful, which in many cases is something that you might want to do in your timeline. Okay, so let's get into Avid's Media Composer and I'm going to show you how simple it is to do. So let's quit out of QuickTime and Command Tab into Avid's Media Composer. Okay, and I guess I should thank myself for throwing to myself. I don't think I've ever actually done that before. Uh, okay, so the first thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a clip to work with. So let's take that clip from the iPhone here, and you can see that I have it pillar boxed. So I'm just going to make sure that the entire clip is marked at the start and the end, which it is. And I'm just going to press B on my keyboard on both Mac and Windows to edit that into my timeline. And what I did is I could have just gone in and scaled this up to get rid of the pillar boxing. But instead what I did is I just used a BCC upres effect. Now I'm not going to get into how BCC upres works. We're going to get into that in a later tutorial. So what I'm going to do is simply just take it. I have it over here in my bin and I'm just going to drag it and drop it into the clip in my timeline. And there we go. I'm zoomed up. I'm looking pretty fantastic if I do say so myself. And the first thing that I did in this effect was I went in and I added a scan lines effect. So I'm just going to press Command and 8 on the Mac control and 8 on Windows. And I'm going to navigate down to OpenGL because that's actually where both of the effects, the Damage TV and scan lines, are located inside OpenGL. And you can see it right down here, scan line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take scan line and I'm not going to drag it and drop it onto my clip. I'm actually going to option drag and drop it onto my clip or for all my Windows friends, you alt drag it onto your clip. Once I hold Option down and let it go, it's going to nest the effect. And you can see that we've got a pretty substantial scan line going on here. Now, one thing I want to point out about Damage TV, and you're going to see this in just a second, is that it is a very powerful effect and it's a good way to really mess up your footage. But one thing I also like about it is you can just do a very subtle uh, mess up to your footage. Uh, and actually make it look very realistic. And that's one thing that I love about this effect. The realism is really, really, really nice. Now, with the scan line effect, I could actually do scan lines inside of the damage TV effect, but I actually prefer doing it this way because I want the damage TV effect nested on top of the scan line so it's impacting the scan lines as well. So what I'm going to do is press Shift and Y on the keyboard because that is my shortcut for effects mode. And if you don't have a shortcut for effects mode, you can obviously get into it right over here by clicking on the effect mode button at the top of your sequence. So I'm just going to go into effects mode and you can come up here to the top to our presets and see that you have a lot of standard presets, one of my favorite, uh, closed circuit TV just like that. Uh, and you can see that you can also get into things like noise inside a scan line. So scan line is not a one trick pony. What I'm actually going to do though is I'm just going to come back up and set it back to its default settings because I only want to use the scan line aspect of this effect. So what we're going to do is just give it a very subtle rolling scan line effect. So I'm just going to select size and I'm going to set the size to be about 1.5 I think. I'm just going to press tab on my keyboard to jump down. Let's set the softness way up to be about 92. Very nice. So you can see over here, it's just a very, very subtle scan line. Now, one of the most important parts of the scan line effect is the fact that we're going to want to have it roll a bit. So I'm just going to set my roll RGB to be about 60, and I'm going to set the speed of the roll to be just very, very slight, about 10, just like that. And you can see that as soon as I clicked on it, the scan lines jumped. And if I was to click through the shot now, you can notice very subtly the scan lines rolling up the image. So I'm pretty happy with the way that this looks. So I'm going to leave this now. So let's get in and add our Damage TV effect. So again, inside of OpenGL, I'm just going to come up to Damage TV. Again, I'm going to hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows, and I'm going to drag the effect down, and I'm going to drop it on top of the Scanline effect that's already on my clip. Now, as soon as I do, you can see the effect on its preset, and it's a pretty good Damage TV effect. Now one thing that's great about this effect is that it's actually got two modes to work and I'm just going to go back into effects mode by pressing shift and Y on my keyboard. Just make sure I have my clip selected here just like that. You can see that we have two control types. We have an auto control and a manual control. And I should also point out that this is another effect that has a lot of presets with it. You have some static presets up here in the top. And obviously you can see down here at the bottom, we have some animated presets as well. And you can see I could just come in and say, show me some heavy damage. And that's some pretty heavy damage. 
Now, again, like I said, I want to go with subtle for this effect because in some cases, doing like huge TV damage is not really what you're going to want to do. We're going to want to make this look like I'm entrenched in some, you know, war-torn country and I'm broadcasting out video over a phone line. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the control type to be manual. And once I have it set to manual, I've actually created a preset so that there's no damage being done to the television at all. I'm just going to come up to the heavy damage drop down. I'm going to come down to load and you're going to notice in here that I have a preset called no damage. I'm simply going to say open and now the effect looks as though that nothing has been applied to it, which is how I want to start with this. I want to start right from zero and work my way up from there. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the color gun offset. I'm going to come down to the red offset. So let's just make sure we got the red offset open. And I'm just going to set the red offset's Z value to be 4. And if you take a look over at the image, you're going to see the red value shift ever so slightly. Now you're probably wondering why did I use red? Well, I probably would have used red or green in this situation. I used red because there's a lot of red in my face. And that's where everybody's looking and that's where it's going to stand out the most. Okay, the next thing that I did was I moved down to ghosting. Now down at ghosting, I set the ghost strength to be probably about 60. I set the ghost count, obviously the number of ghosts that are going to be seen, to be 2. And then I set the ghost distance to be 60, just like that. Now that's starting to look pretty much like some bad video phone. Now, last but not least, I wanted to add a little bit of noise in. Now, not too much noise, just an ever so slight amount. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to set the amount of noise to be 3. And if you take a look over at my image now, you can see that we've got a lot of noise appearing, but it's a little bit too big for my liking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set that size to be 5. And that's looking pretty good. Now, this right here looks like a bad video phone. And believe it or not, what I'm going to do now is simply come up and I'm going to say... Let's save this as a preset and I'm going to call it bad video over phone line. Now I have this preset for me to use anytime I want, not to have a huge amount of damage, but just to have that ever so slight amount to give your shot that extra bit of realism. And if you take a look at the final product, you know, it turned out very, very nicely and looks very realistic. So I hope this tutorial has shown you two things. One, how stacking effects can work very easily inside of Avid's Media Composer. And two, in a lot of cases with some of these effects, when you look at the presets, they've taken them and they've taken these presets to the extreme to show you what these effects can do. But sometimes just using them subtly is going to give you the best looking end result. So if you have any questions, comments, or tutorial requests, you can send them to support at borisfx.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.